Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint a chihuahua in acrylics. Now the first thing that I like to start off with once I've done the background is the eyes. Now what I'm doing here is just making sure that I'm mapping in my main lights and darks so that I can get the size and the shape of the eye accurate to that reference photo. So the position of the main highlights and shadows is very important. This is what's going to help to build up that sphere and three dimensional shape of the eye. Now the reflections in the reference photo I was working from for this is it had quite unique shapes so I wanted to be making sure that I captured that as accurately as I could. Now this is only an 8 by 10 size painting so I do have to be realistic with how much detail I can include but as you can see here I've hinted at those main shapes, the lights and the darks. Now as I start to work on the fur, this tutorial on Patreon really focused on brush technique and how to paint realistic fur. Now the reason that I decided to do this in grayscale just with using black and white paint is so that I can show how to mix the paint, how to layer, how to use the brushes, but most importantly how to focus on the importance of contrast and values. And this can massively help when we work with our colours. In order to mix those paints, how to use that, how to load that paint onto the brush, if we only have two colours to worry about, it therefore makes it easier throughout that process, especially when we're learning the medium. So that when we start working with the colours and the range of colours that we can have on our palette, it means then that we've already got the confidence with mixing those paints by working in grayscale first. Now I love creating this effect in acrylics, I think it can really have some drama to the paintings, but in order to do that the contrast does have to be right. So if I don't have the darks dark enough or the highlights bright enough, the painting, like with anything, even when we work with colour, it will appear flat. So here this is why the importance of values is crucial. Now when we work with grayscale, just with that black and white paint, this is where we can really focus on the values from the very first layers. We don't have to worry about mixing exact colours, we can still use glazes to make areas of fur lighter or darker, so all of the same principles are going to be practised here that we can then transfer into our colour paintings. Now for this painting I'm just using a combination of round brushes and liner brushes so that I can get a variation in my brush strokes. I'm also going to be turning this painting round at times so that I can really move that brush in a more effective way. Now this is something that I do focus in the real time version on Patreon because sometimes, especially when we work on the longer fur of the ears, it's very hard to get that natural brush stroke when we're looking at the painting in a natural way as it is here on the right way up. If we turn that painting over we can get a much better angle on that brush and the brush strokes end up looking far more natural. But of course as we get to that I'll explain that further. Now as I continue to work on the rest of the face, notice how I'm really focusing on the softness of that base layer. Now again, this is something that I focus the real time version on Patreon because this makes a huge difference. It doesn't matter what the fur texture is, how long or how short it is, that base layer there is very, very important. I put so much focus in that layer because it's the base layer of our foundation for our details. So in order to get that right, I feel that therefore it makes those brush details on top that I'm applying here appear more natural. Now in order to get that base layer as soft as it was between the light and the dark sections that meet, the use of blending techniques is very important. Now of course this is something that I cover thoroughly in the real time version on Patreon. Because I've done this, like with all of my other tutorials, with a voiceover while I'm painting at the time, I'm able to explain that in the moment. So whether or not I've done a specific brush stroke or I'm holding or moving my brush in a specific way, those blending techniques, making sure that we've got that paint seamlessly soft and flowing from one to the next, just to create that softer layer, all of that is explained at the time. Now when I came to working on the nose, again look at the layering process here, I started off with a smoother blended layer and then I'm building up my details on top. This will be the same with everything and all I'm doing differently here is studying that reference photo to make sure that I am really paying attention to the fur direction. And the fur technique here with the brushes, it's going to vary depending on the animal. So the fur length, the fur thickness, whether the dog's got curly fur or short fur, all of that is going to mean that we have to move that brush in a different way. But I have a video here on YouTube, it's my top tips for painting realistic fur in acrylics. I'll link that in the description below if it's of interest. But in that video I talk about one of three main things. So the brush technique falls into three categories. It's the fur direction, fur length and fur thickness. 
Now the third direction is not random. It follows the underlying bone and muscular structure. So if we don't get that right in our paintings, it's going to change the proportions and potentially perspective of that dog or animal that we are painting. Now the fur length of course is decided by how long that brush is in contact with the surface. So here, if I don't get that variation right, I'm gonna make all of the fur look quite long. And of course, I don't want the fur on the muzzle to appear as long as the fur on the side of the face. That would make this dog not look like a chihuahua. So that would have a real detrimental effect to the finished painting. Now the brush stroke, the thickness of those brush strokes is determined by a couple of factors. Even how much paint we've got loaded on our brush is going to affect the way that those brush strokes look. So again, this is something that I do cover in the real time version on Patreon. Now also on Patreon, there is a palette camera as well. So you can see how I'm loading my brush, the colors, how I'm mixing it through each layer. And that can be really beneficial. How much water I'm also adding at each stage can really help because depending on the length of that brush stroke, you may need to have a thinner mixture. If you're looking for more of an opaque layer like this first layer here, I'm trying to cover that background completely. I therefore want that layer to be nice and opaque. You're gonna to want to use less water. So all of that at the moment may sound a little bit strange, but when explained in the moment for each layer that we're working on, it makes so much more sense. But an opaque layer basically means that you can't see through it. So the less water you have, or you pick more colors that are naturally opaque, means you're going to be able to get that better coverage and hide those layers underneath. Now, one thing that I talk about in all videos, both here on YouTube and of course on Patreon, is that we don't actually want to always cover the layers underneath. You do want to be able to have those darks, mid-tones showing through when you're building your layers of the fur. Now, for instance, look at these little highlights, these mid-tones that I'm adding here. They wouldn't look realistic if they didn't have the correct base foundation in. So if we are working with more of those solid layers and we're finding that things have a little bit more of a rigid look, then that's usually because there's not enough layers added underneath to build up that softness. Now going back to what I mentioned earlier about turning my paintings round, this is something that I very rarely do. I don't like doing it too much for the tutorials, but when we're working on fur that's as long as this, you know, this is really quite extreme. Turning that painting round gives us a much better purchase on the brush. We can then drag that brush back towards us and then get more, more of that natural movement within our hand. Because sometimes when we're forcing those brush strokes, trying to bend our wrist and our, move our hand in a very odd way, we end up creating straighter lines or more rigid lines. And again, going back to everything that I've mentioned here, it's all about the softness. The way that this longer fur flows, that's all about the softness of that fur. If I make my brush strokes too rigid, too straight, I'm potentially going to make the fur look more coarse and wiry. So all of these things are so important and the, you know, turning that painting round at times whenever we need to can really help. Now this side of the painting, I didn't have to turn round because while I'm right handed, I was able to get a better angle on the brush. But here, the length of my brush strokes are still the same. But what's different is the lighting. Now the reason I chose this reference photo for this was the beautiful lighting that captured on the side and the tops of the ears. I just thought it created a real nice effect and real depth. So here you can see I'm paying very close attention to make sure that I get those lights and darks in place. If I don't have my highlights really bright here, this is just titanium white, then it's not gonna have that drama, that wow impact that I'm going for. That little highlight on the top of the head, look at how that's brought the face forward and helped to push that ear back slightly. Now, when I come to work on the body of this dog, this is where I used more of my softening and blending techniques for my base layers. Blending acrylics is one of the most common questions that I'm asked because of the faster drying time, it can make it tricky to use the medium. But really, we can actually make them stay wet for as long as we need and you can create the effects that look very similar to oils. So here, I'm putting in my lights and my darks, but I'm doing wet on wet blending. That paint's not being given an opportunity to dry, so I'm therefore able to soften and blend each of those colors in together. Now this first layer, it doesn't look pretty, but it's meant to look like this. We can't just work with one or two layers and expect to have a highly detailed photorealistic painting. But look at how each layer I'm adding here is helping to build up that depth, bring more of that three-dimensional shape to this section of the painting. Now you can see a photo of the finished painting in the corner and just how clumped together, how grouped together the chest fur was, but it still looked fine and very soft. 
So I'm gonna have to be making sure that I'm using the right number of layers and brush technique to get that right. Now here, look at how the fur really exaggeratedly curves over and down towards the lower edge of the canvas. In order for me to achieve that, I do have to turn my painting round at times. I'm then gonna work with glazes. So this here is a thin transparent layer of paint which enables me to either adjust the color or in this case, make that darker. Now I've got a video here on YouTube and it's talking all about glazes. I've got two or three different painting examples. I'll link that video in the description below if it's of interest. And glazes, in terms of how I use them, it is going to vary from each individual painting. But here that was just to make those details a little bit darker and push those back. Once those layers have the softness in place, I can start to then work on building in those highlights. Now you'll see here that I'm working in small sections. This is important for me. I feel like I'm able to get through that painting in much more of an effective way and I end up achieving more in a shorter space of time. If I work on large individual areas, so if I was to do the base layer of the entire dog, then I do the second layer and so on, I personally find that I end up rushing and I skip important layers. So if you are working on individual layers or maybe in a larger area and you're starting to feel overwhelmed, you're looking at your reference photo, back at your painting, not quite sure where you should be, that's an indication that you're working on too much of a larger area. Maybe scale that down, just work on one or two square inches and you'll find that you will progress quicker through that piece. But you'll get a better result in most cases because you're not overwhelming yourself by looking at too much or an entire image at one time. Now one thing to notice here is when the paint is applied, particularly the dark paint, it looks darker than the rest of the painting and that's just because the paint is wet. By the time a gloss varnish is applied over the top of this, that's going to make all of this section look how it did when the paint was first applied, when it was wet. So that's gonna have that impact where you're gonna have darker shadows, your dark paint is going to look that much darker and your highlights are going to appear brighter. Now, of course, that does also um, rely upon the fact that you've got the contrast right in the first place. So you do wanna be making sure that you've got your contrast, your values correct before you finish and varnish that painting but that is something to bear in mind. The acrylic paint here is not fading, it's just drying with a matte finish, which will be corrected once that varnish is applied. So I really do hope the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video have been useful. If they were, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. If you would like to get notified of the content I upload here, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. I upload two videos every single week in either pastels, acrylics or graphite. If you have any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And if you would like to paint along to this, the real time version is on Patreon as I've said, so I'll pop all of that in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'm going to be uploading another video next week.